remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, and through which also you are being saved. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Please be seated. Those of you who are part of the St. Paul's family know that I did not grow up in the Episcopal tradition, uh, a different uh, denominational background for me, but I won't ever forget my very first Easter Sunday at an Episcopal church. We had just begun attending this church. I was not yet confirmed, though I was in that process, and I was just learning all the weird ways that Episcopalians do things. Liturgical seasons, for one thing, was very foreign to my experience, and the way the liturgy actually changes over the year. You know, this opening acclamation that we do during Easter is different than the one we do during Lent. It's different than the one we do other times of the year. And I just had memorized that that Lent on, you know, bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, his mercy endures forever. Well, okay, I got that. took me 40 days, but I figured that one out. So here we are getting ready for our first Easter service at good old St. Peter's by the Lake in Brandon, Mississippi. Yes, indeed. And my uh, oldest child was three years old at the time. My, my, ba- my middle child was not quite one. And my son was not even thought about <laughs> during that time. And, of course, you know what you do. You dress those little girls up in their Easter finest and put giant bows in their hair. And um, my wife, Jennifer, had really big hair in those days also. <laughs> Uh, I say that, I won't say it at the 11.30 because she'll be at that <laughs> service. So don't, please. Don't. And of course, I'm wearing the required uniform of any southern gentleman on his way to church, a seersucker suit and a bright yellow tie. <laughs> so we pull up there at the church at St. Peter's, and as we climb out of the car, here comes the senior warden of that church, who I've gotten to know a little bit over the last few months, and on his shoulder... It's one of those giant, heavy old camcorders. Do you remember those things? You had to carry, weigh about 40 pounds. You're lugging those things at dance recitals and kids' plays and all that kind of stuff. And that's what he had back in those days, right? So he points that camera in my face as I get out of the car, and he says, David, alleluia, Christ is risen. <laughs> I just kind of look at him, right? Okay. I have no clue what I'm supposed to say back. I didn't know there was some expected response. So there I am on film for all the world to see just staring blankly (laughs) into the camera. So he does what any of us would do, right? He assumes I just didn't hear him. So he says it again louder, right? (laughs) Trying to wake me up from my trance, I'm sure. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And this time I finally mumble, um, yay, Jesus. That is a true story. (laughs) Look for that in the prayer book revision next time around. I don't think yay Jesus was quite what this man expected someone to say, right? The senior warden of my church had some solid expectations of how someone would respond when you say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And those became unrealized expectations for him in regards to me at least. Unrealized and unmet expectations, such was also the case on the very first Easter Sunday morning. Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. These wonderful yet heartbroken, dedicated, devoted women, beloved followers of Jesus, they had witnessed most likely that cruel death of our Lord on the cross. And they knew where he had been laid in the tomb. They were aware, of course, of how Jesus' limp and battered and lifeless body had been placed in this hole in a rock with a large stone rolled over the front of it, a body that was not properly prepared for burial because the crucifixion took place too close to sundown, which marked the beginning of the Sabbath. So they had to wait for that task. They honored the Sabbath as they always had, as God had commanded since creation. And now here it is, the next morning, early in the morning, the sun beginning to rise, and they go to this tomb, and they have one set of expectations, and one only. They came not expecting an empty tomb. 
but the broken body of this man that they loved and followed. And on the way, pondering, we know from other gospel accounts, how are we going to move that stone from the front of it? Well, as they turned the corner, problem solved. (laughs) And their expectations were about to be shattered. Go quickly, the angel says, and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, There you will see him. Even though Jesus had been telling them what would happen, they still did not expect it, did they? We know from the other gospel accounts that they carried spices with them. That's why they're going to the tomb. They want to anoint the dead body and prepare it properly for burial. They carried the spices to the tomb with them. Instead of a dead body, they encounter an earthquake and an angel with a simple message, one line in particular that completely changed not just their lives, but the world itself from that moment on. He is not here, for he has been raised. Not here, not in a grave. He is no longer dead. Why look for the living in a tomb? No longer does death have power. No more does the grave have sting. No longer, my friends, is there no hope or no joy. No longer is there no faith. All that he told them was true. On this Easter Sunday, what are your expectations? Do you sometimes feel the weight of the world is on your shoulders? Do you wonder what has happened to joy? Do you cringe at the thought of how incredibly busy your life is, crammed with activity after activity? Do you, do you look for ways to escape reality by overworking or overfunctioning or over self-medicating or overindulging? And when you live into any or all of those things, what do you expect on the other side? Happiness? Joy? Love? Hope? Well, you may expect all those things, but I'm here to tell you just as the expectations of that senior warden many years ago, and just as the expectations of those beautiful women at the tomb, our expectations have been proven wrong. And when we do those things, we too are looking in the wrong place. My friends, it is true that for each of us, for all of us, no matter how pious we may try to be, there are times in our lives when we show up And we look at God with burial spices in our hands, don't we? And you know what? That's okay. Because obviously God can work with that. And today, you've shown up. You've come to this church maybe for the only time this year, and that's okay. Because here you are. And you may, in fact, have burial spices in one hand and an Easter lily in the other with expectations that can block you from the full knowledge of the love and grace of Christ. So let's go back there. Let's picture it back in our minds. Let's look again at those women at the tomb. In our mind's eye, can you walk with them and round the corner in that garden as the earth rolls beneath them and the stone is rolled aside by this angelic presence who, the Scripture says, looked like lightning. If they came to prepare his body, can you imagine them at that moment dropping those spices on the ground in awe and wonder and confusion as the entire world shifts, not because of the earthquake, but because all the expectations of life shift at that precise moment when the news was first said out loud to the world, he is not here. For he has been raised. Come and see, the angel says. Come and see and look for yourselves. He's not here. He is no longer dead. The women rushed from there to tell the disciples, just as they were told to do so, and to make the shattering of every expectation of their lives now complete. And as they turn to run, they see the risen Lord Jesus, who says to them, Greetings! I find to be a very interesting thing to say to Jesus that from Jesus when he first encounters people after his resurrection. I would have said, surprise! You know? (laughs) 
Greetings, though, he says. And then, of course, he says, don't be afraid, but go, 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 go and tell. Go and tell the others. And from that instant, because of their witness, the world has never been the same. My friends, as our country becomes more and more a secular and not religious nation, the push and pull to put aside the things of God, it becomes stronger and stronger, doesn't it? Yet, something led you here this morning. No matter your expectations or what you carry in your hands and hearts today, here we are. And maybe we too can expect something different. You see, I believe that taking on Jesus is just the opposite of taking on more things, more tasks, more responsibility. That is one of the gifts of Easter Sunday. The tomb was empty so that we can be filled. Filled with joy and grace. Filled with the amazing and unconditional love of Christ. Don't you want that? Do you want to be filled that way? In the Gospels, Jesus says, keep company with me and you will experience life more abundantly. In fact, my friends, you can expect it to be so. And it starts just like it did on that very first Easter morning by showing up, just by showing up, even if our expectations are completely wrong. Our psalm today says that this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous to our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hear me again. It is the Lord's doing, not ours. All we have to do is show up, spices in hand, and be changed forever. My prayer for you this Easter Sunday is that your expectations change. The one who has called you by name does not lie in a grave in Jerusalem. He is not there. He has risen. We dare not look for the living among the dead. Instead, we are called to be like those faithful women and be brave and courageous and dare enough to tell the good news, to go and share this amazing news, the news that changes everything and everyone. My dear brothers and sisters, just drop the burial spices and run with joy because, say it with me, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Yay, Jesus! Amen.